I want to start with the premise that uh, you've started with uh, from the very beginning, the outside perspective. You want to be the outsider, being able to have a look at the city, uh, not necessarily one of the people that are at City Hall now. So give me exactly what, uh, what that means for you to be able to say, I'm not on the inside, I'm actually looking at it from a different perspective. Yeah, it's been a great privilege to be a newspaper columnist, broadcaster for, for over 12 years in this great city. And as you know, you get to know the city, all corners of it. You get to know people of all walks of life. It's an amazing city and people love Toronto, but they also tell you their concerns. And the concerns that they have right now are tracking up. And I think the issues that I've been writing about the most and harping on about on talk radio the past, not just three months of this campaign, but long before that past year or two, those are the issues that have come to a head right now. One of the main reasons I'm running for mayor is because the issues that I've already been advocating for that are authentic to me are the issues that I think the people want to see change on right now. So one of my signature issues is phasing out the drug injection sites, replacing the treatment centers. We lived a few blocks from Moss Park, nice condo building, but right near uh, all of that, you know, unfortunate scenes unfolding at Moss Park. We've seen the drug crisis play out most acutely. We know it's now spilling over into the suburbs Parents want to see a different approach on this, both parents of children who find needles in the park and also parents of, of addicts who I've spoken to who say we want to go in a different direction. And, and I think City Hall is really beholden to some, some old ways of thinking on these issues and I want to bring the fresh perspective. I, I'm not beholden to anything going on at City Hall. And when people say, oh, have you been a counselor? I say, no, I haven't. Thanks for pointing out you know, my, my selling point because I think people want to see a bit of an outside voice. I mean, I know the issues. I've been dealing with them for years. I know all the files, but I, I don't bring the status quo approach to the issues. What about the experience that some people say is needed to be able to take on a position like this though? I've got it because my experience is, is really reading the pulse of the people. That's what I've been doing throughout the past 10 years, interacting with readers, interacting with the audience across the city. And also I know how to get to the top experts on all the files. I'm not saying I'm gonna be the smartest guy in the room as mayor. I'm saying I have the skill set to identify the smartest women and men and empower their voices to help me run the mayor's office. You've talked about efficiencies and the need to find those efficiencies, both yourself and Mark Saunders uh, throughout this. What do you expect to find when the city's gone through this process before and hasn't necessarily done so? What the city hasn't gone through is talking about what's a need to have and what's a nice to have. People want to go back to basics. When I'm knocking on the doors, people say affordability, housing, public safety. They don't say, for instance, that they want tens of millions of dollars more spent on climate change, a file that Mr. Trudeau has a whole lot of programs going on. He's got that covered. So there are files that they don't want more money sunken into. You've talked about no new taxes and making sure that uh, some of the uh, extra revenue tools uh, wouldn't be brought in. I'm just curious what you do about the existing revenue tools that are in place right now when we talk about land transfer taxes as an example of that. Yeah, I've already said I'm going to get rid of the municipal land transfer tax for first time home buyers. If people are saying that housing affordability is one of the number one issues in this election, and that's what they're saying, particularly with a concern that their children or grandchildren may never be able to afford a home, the municipal land transfer tax is really the only single lever City Hall has and the mayor's office has to directly bring down the price of a home to the tune of $25,000 or so. Now I'm also going to be laser focused on on more growth, building faster, building more units, but axing that land transfer tax for first time home buyers, that's a priority. The city building fund above and beyond the property taxes is something that's in place right now. Do you keep that? Uh, that's not something that's on the chopping block right now, but uh, things that uh, people have been complaining about, you want to hear their concerns and you want to see how you can best serve their interests. The supervised injection sites, that seems to be a major plank in your yes. platform to be able to do away with that. You said you want treatment though for some of those people. How do you go balancing the two? Is it just a matter of getting rid of all those injection sites altogether and putting all that investment into the treatment centers? It's about phasing them out and flipping them into treatment centers. City Hall right now is planning to build more injection sites. There's already sunken costs that they've received from other levels of government to proceed with it. And also, they're trying to turn the shelter system into de facto injection sites in Scarborough, North York, Etobicoke. We're a compassionate society who want to care for the homeless, and we have a situation happening there, but we just can't keep going with this enabling culture. The past 20 years have proven that that is just creating more addiction, more overdose deaths, and more 
disorder on our streets that spills over into sort of bringing down the quality of life for everyone. How do you go about making sure that there's more or getting the people that need the treatment into those spaces? If you go into hospital or see your doctor and you're a smoker, they are really going to make it clear from the first moment, hey, let's find a way to get you off cigarette smoking. They're going to bring it up every time you stop by. That's happening right now and kudos to those health professionals for helping people with their smoking addiction. Right now, we do not push treatment at all. Some of those same people are living in parks right now, in the encampments. That's another major uh, piece within your platform as well, is to clear them out. How do you go about doing that, knowing that the last time this was attempted didn't go all that well? Well, I'm going to put families first, so we're going to clear the parks. Like I said, we can't have this disorder spill over to negatively affect uh, regular law-abiding, hard-working families in Toronto. So my commitment to them is they will be able to fully use the parks this summer. We've seen what's happened past summers, and we know the tent encampments are spilling over into parks all across Toronto, and we're going to responsibly uh, clear those parks. That, that's priority number one, families first. What does responsibly mean, though? How do you go about clearing them? Well, I understand that, uh, as Councillor Chris Moyes has said, at Allen Gardens, uh, he and, and other crisis workers have gone to people and they've offered them uh, services and, and other opportunities to leave and they haven't taken up those opportunities. So I think that's a really responsible thing that they've done and, and hopefully more people will take them up on that. But the bottom line is they can't stay in the parks because the parks are for everyone to share. With the shelter system at capacity, where do they go? Well, look, first of all, we say they can't stay at the parks. I mean, these are, these are adults who make their own choices. So City Hall didn't choose for them to be in the parks. So I don't think it's, it's not fair what all the other councillors and the people running against me have said, that we have to wait 10 years until there's more housing units built, until children can have access to their playgrounds again, and until children uh, can have their parks free of needles. I don't believe in that approach at all. Tell me about your, your plans in terms of affordable housing to be able to get people into those spaces when they can't necessarily afford others. All the builders, all the groups and companies that are passionate about getting more affordable housing in Toronto say that red tape, time and development charges are the major impediment. And they're not asking for any special treatment, Mark. They're not asking for any handouts. Really what they're telling me is time is money. So when you're buying land and you're getting a loan out on it, and then you see that you have to wait over two years to get approved to proceed with this, and it's just a red tape holdup, that adds cost to everyone, both buyers, and it will spill over into rentals, the cost of rent in these units. So I have said as mayor, Anything you have to apply to the city for, if it's not definitively dealt with within a specific time window, it gets auto-approved. So for patio applications, six weeks, I'll see it auto-approved. For housing development, six months. Let's move on to the police officers. 500 more police officers, what would they be needed for? They are needed for a more visible presence on our streets, in public transit, and in our communities. People just don't feel safe on public transit anymore. The subways are dirty, quite frankly, they smell bad, and people are worried for their safety. So, so many people tell me, whatever meeting I have, Mark, with people, whatever the, the original uh, reason for the meeting, at some point someone always says, you know, my 13-year-old, I used to let them take the subway to go to school or downtown or what have you, not anymore. Now I drive them. Geez, no wonder gridlock is, is, is adding uh, because people just want to drive. They don't want to be on the subway anymore. We need a more visible police presence. You've got a number of competitors in this race saying that they will be providing mental health supports yes. for a lot of the people and they want to use some of that budget that would otherwise go to the police in order to do that. So how do you provide those supports that might be needed and how do you pay for them? I support more mental health uh, supports and programs, but the priority right now has to be public safety. And I'll tell you, these random attacks taking place on our streets, on public transit, so many police, health professionals tell me they mostly relate to the drug crisis, that the people doing these attacks are troubled by drugs. So my plan to phase out the injection sites, replacing the treatment centers, is also about making the subways and the streets safer for us and our families. What makes you the better choice over someone like Mark Saunders? I'm energized. I'm passionate about this city. All of my ideas are based on conviction. I'm the father of three small kids, five, seven, and nine years old. And I'm fighting for this city to make it better for my family and, and for families all across the city. I love this city. It's a city worth fighting for. You've also said you don't want divisive politics if yeah. you get elected at City Hall, and yet your views might be considered on the right side of the political agenda. So 
how do you expect to bring people together who don't necessarily agree with you? When it comes to affordability, when it comes to phasing out the drug sites, uh, when it comes to bringing public safety back to our streets, you would be surprised by the coalition of people who are joining my team. I'm, I'm proud to have people really all across the political spectrum. I'm endorsed by a lot of former conservative MPs, also former liberal MPs, and I want to work with everyone. I'm, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a happy warrior. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an affable guy, so I'm looking forward to working with everyone on council. There's some news this morning at Queen's Park about the strong mayor powers being expanded to other municipalities. Do you use them as mayor in Toronto? I want to get 50% plus one on everything because it's a democracy. People voted for their city councillors. So you better believe I'm going to try and uh, work together to, to forge consensus. But at the end of the day, if there's something that is a priority that I have a clear mandate to do, I'll do what I got to do. Thanks for doing this. Thanks, Mark.